If you head over to any brokerage account, generally speaking, when you log in and you look at the most commonly traded stocks amongst their clients, BP, PLC, British Petroleum are generally up there. One of the most popular stocks in the FTSE 100. Uh, daily average volume of shares traded of 30 million shares a day. But are they a good long-term investment and how do they fare on the leaderboard? Hey there guys, how's it going? I hope you are well. Welcome to the FTSE show with me, Chris Chillingworth. Today we're going to take a look at British Petroleum, BP PLC, one of the most popular stocks of the FTSE 100. Um, as I said before in the intro, 30 million shares a day traded amongst different traders. Uh, and generally, I've, in my experience, many, many investors tend to steer towards BP as their first ever first pick. And I think, you know, oil generally is looked at by the common public as a great place to make money. Uh, and I think BP are generally that company that everybody knows, they're a household name, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're a good investment. And so today we're going to go through the numbers, we're going to crunch through the financials to see whether or not they stack up uh, and, and, and work for us in terms of what we're looking for in a growth stock, uh, identify any of the problems that might be there, and we're going to chuck them up at the leaderboard at the end of the uh, episode and see how they fare against some of the other companies that we've already gone through and see how they continue to uh, stack up against all the other companies that we add on through the future episodes. So without any further delay, let's dive into the numbers. Okay, so let's dive into the numbers of BP PLC then. So Epic Code is BP. Uh, they're in the FTSE 100, one of the biggest companies, UK companies in the FTSE. Uh, and they're in the oil, gas and coal sector. Uh, so first of all, we're going to look at turnover. So as you can see from the numbers here, turnover has been pretty much flat, if not down. Uh, back in 2008, we're looking at $361 billion in revenue. So this is a huge company compared to te you know, any any other company in the FTSE, essentially. Uh, there's only a handful that are as big as BP. BP are a giant. And uh, yeah, $361 billion in revenue in 2008, only $298 billion 10 years later in 2018. Now, you can see there's been a bit of a roller coaster ride, but really we haven't been... Uh, at any stage above 370 odd billion, right? So that's the kind of peak that they've had. And uh, we we saw that kind of between 2008, 2012, 2013, sorry. And then it started to kind of tailor off and even 2016 here uh, was down to 183 billion and it started to make its way back up over the last three years. Uh, but when we take the whole 10 year uh, progress into account, they still haven't reached the point that they're at back in 2008 in terms of revenue. And so uh, trend-wise, we're down. So revenue has gone down over the last 10 years, which is not indicative, not the kind of signals we're looking for in terms of a growth stock. So first of all, that's a negative. We can look at cost of sales. Cost of sales uh, back in 2008 was $266 billion. Uh, we're now looking at 229 billion, so that has gone down. Again, we've had a very similar roller coaster ride over those 10 years, where it's gone up and it's come down, it's gone up and it's come down. Uh, but it's lower than it was 10 years ago, so overall trend is downwards, which is good. Um, uh, the real way to kind of measure the two of those, though, i.e., the revenue that comes in and the cost of the sales, the cost of, of what they do. Uh, is the uh, the gross margin or the gross profit essentially, and what percentage does that represent of the revenue? Okay, so in other words, what slice of the pie are they keeping at this early stage with still some deductions to come and, and costs to come out of it? What's the slice of the pie that they're starting with? Back in 2008, that was a 26.1% slice of the pie. Now it's only a 23.1% slice of the pie. So that has gone down. Again, like the the story of BP, it's been a roller coaster ride across that ten year period. It's been up, it's been down along the way, but overall the trend is down. The the margin that, that they're keeping is less today than it was back then. So not only has the revenue gone down, but the slice of the pie that they're keeping of the revenue 
is lower as well. So that's a double whammy. It's, it's you know, again, it's not what we're looking for. We're looking for the opposite of that. We want to see growth in revenue. We want to see growth in the gross margin in the in the slice of the pie that they're keeping. Um, so gross profit, for example, in two thousand eight was ninety four billion. In two thousand eighteen, their gross profit is sixty eight billion. So sure, last three years it's been up, but it's still lower than it was ten years ago. And that's going to have an impact on the share price, I can assure you. When we look at the chart in a moment, you're going to see uh, the impact that that's going to have on the share price. Um, look at the, Looking at the expenses of the business, uh, the, the cost of the doing the business essentially. So this is wages, this is property, plant and equipment costs, this is rates, utilities, rents, all of that kind of stuff. Just the cost of doing the business, of running BP essentially, all the wages and all that kind of stuff. Uh, back in 2008, represented 57% of the gross profit. Today, the expenses represent about 56% of the gross profit. So pretty much the same. Now, again, story of the whole of the whole series is going to be this roller coaster ride that BP have been on. It's been up, it's been down, it's been up, it's been down. But over the 10 year period, it's pretty much back where they started back in 2008. So, yeah, it, the actual expenses have gone down, but relative to the revenue that's coming in, or the, sorry, the gross profit that they're keeping, uh, the percentage is about the same. So, we would call that flat. The, the expenses are currently flat right now. They haven't really, we haven't seen any strong period of growth. However, what's promising is that expenses have gone down consistently over the last four years from 92 to 56. So we're kind of back where we started that 10 years ago. But over the last four years, it's been very bad, but making its way back to where they were, if that makes sense. So there's a positive in there, in the fact that the last four years have been more promising. But overall, we're still only you know the expenses are still at that level and we'd like to see a reduction in expenses if we could that would be a nice efficient business <clears throat> a company that are uh that don't need to spend as much to run you know and there are companies out there that are slowly reducing their expenses unfortunately bp uh haven't achieved that yet um uh, <clears throat> but they might be working on it it looks like they're working on it. the last four years have been more promising uh depreciation costs not not so good uh, so again, this is a percentage of the profit, the gross profit. So uh, depreciation costs made up 11.7% of the profit uh, or took away 11.7% of the profit, 8 into it uh, back in 2008, now 22.4%. So uh, depreciation has risen. The cost of depreciation and amortization has, improved, uh, has, has increased. Uh, improved is not the right word. Uh, 10.9 billion. Back in 2008, now 15.4 billion, 10 years later. Uh, so we would expect an increase in in depreciation to a certain extent, but relative to the profit that's coming in, obviously the profit that's coming in has gone down, and the depreciation has gone up, which is why we've seen such a jump in the percentages because it's all the wrong way around. You know, depreciation is going up, but the profit that's coming in is going down and as a result of that you know it's taken a bigger and bigger slice the depreciation of that profit so that's not good again it's the opposite to what we're looking for so now we've got the operating profit operating profit in 2008 was 29 billion so that's basically the gross profit minus these uh, expenses the R&D the depreciation uh, they're left with 29 billion in operating profits uh, 10 years later we're looking at 14.3 billion so it's a massive drop a massive drop and we've had, actually had losing years in here as well quite a few of them uh, there's three different losing years there so again losing years are a massive no-no when it comes to looking for growth stocks that's a losing year can destroy the share price and that's not what we're looking for in terms of investors um, but yeah that we're, we're seeing again a downward trend there in operating profit again it's a bit of a roller coaster along the way but it is definitely a downward trend uh, and then we're looking at interest on debt and back in 2008, it was 3.3%. It's now 18.4%. Now, that's largely going to be reflective of the loss in profit, in, in operating profit, or the decrease in operating profit, uh, hence why the percentage is higher. Because, yes, the interest on debt has gone up from 956 million to 2.6 billion over the last 10 years. 
uh, but it looks worse because it's a percentage of the profit, the operating profit, and that has also gone down. So, uh, yeah, it's it's not good. Uh, what it essentially means is that they're spending 20% of their operating profit just on interest on debt alone. So that's not cool. That's not what we're looking for. We can look at net, net earnings. This is the slice of the pie that's left for the shareholders, essentially. Uh, essentially, after all the taxes have been deducted and all deductions have been taken out, and I've also gone through the painstaking process of ex uh, extracting all extraneous uh, income and outgoings. So anything where they've sold off a big asset that they can't sell every year, you know, it's a one-off sale. We removed all that because it's not doesn't reflect the performance of the recurring business of BP, the everyday recurring business. So all of that's been taken out. What we're left with is the true net earnings, which you don't get reported on. Okay, so all the stuff, all the websites that you look at that tell you all of the financials of a company don't have the extraneous one-off sales here and there or the sales of rights or the sales of licenses that are just a one-off sale. They don't have that extracted. That's something that I have to go in and do myself and it gives you a much more truer picture of what's actually happening at the company. Um, you can see here, back in 2008, they were achieving a 4.4% uh, earnings, net earnings, which is low in itself, right? I mean, this is a company, BP are... Uh, in 2008 we're, we're making 4% profit a year so they're bringing in 361 billion and making a profit of 15 billion so they're really keeping very little of the money that's coming in it's all being eaten up in, in the various expenses and costs uh, that, are, that are basically eaten away at all the money now don't get me wrong 15.7 billion profit is a very very good profitable number this is a very profitable company and a very profitable business do not get me wrong but when compared to the overall uh, power of the business what we're looking at here is that if you're running a business which is only making a four percent profit a year what it means is that it's a pretty small margin and all it would take is a a hike in uh, in expenses or a jump in depreciation costs that are, is going to cause you your business to have a losing year to make no money to wipe out all of the profit and therefore companies with small net earnings like 4% I stay away from I've got nothing to do with companies at that level because if you invest in a company like that and they have that losing year it can destroy the share price and that's not what we're looking for we don't want to have to we don't want to be holding a company for 10 years and find in 10 years time it's it's worth less than it was when we bought right and so i stay well away from any companies that are uh, uh treading on thin ice should i should i say um but anyway 4.4% in 2008 they've had some losing years and this is exactly what i'm talking about Ex uh, it was the expenses that year that uh came in at 885 billion well, the gross profit that year was only 80 billion in itself, so they were straight away making a loss before depreciation costs, before taxes have been deducted, before interest on debt. Uh, and these guys made a 15.1 billion loss that year, well, or 5.1% loss. So, I mean, that's killer. That's, I mean, <laughs> that's going to kill share price for sure. You know, if BP posts that they made a massive loss that year, their share price is going to fall. Uh, in 2011, we're looking at 4.2. Then I had another losing year in 2012. Then 1.8% return. Another losing year in 2014. Another losing year in 2015. Two more losing years in 2016 and 2017. Now, this isn't what was reported by BP. They reported profits of 172 million and 3.4 billion. But again, we've removed the extraneous circumstances, the one off sales of an asset that they have or a piece of property or a piece of land or a right or a trademark or something something that they've sold off and made a big profit on but it's nothing to do with their recurring business it's just they sold off a chunk of their company and we take that out and what the true picture then is of the recurring business is that basically from 2014 to 2017 this business has been making a loss and it's been losing billions uh, which is not cool, <laughs> right? And again, not a company that you want to invest in, really. Last year, 2018, we're looking at 1.5% uh, uh, profit. But again, it's it's very, very thin. You know, it's thin on the ground. It's a very thin ice. Not a company I would particularly be invested in. Uh, investing in. And so, yeah, I mean, we can carry on going through this, but it's not looking good for BP. Uh, assets against liabilities are healthy, 
Uh, they are covering their liabilities with their assets, that's short-term assets, short-term liabilities. Uh, net earnings to long-term debt. So essentially, I'm looking at the long-term debt here. So back in 2008, uh, they were borrowing or they had an outstanding debt of $17.4 billion. By 2018, that's gone up to $56.4 billion. Now, that's not necessarily terrible because uh, a growth in debt isn't an issue if the company is raising revenue, if it's getting more revenue coming in, or its profits are increasing and it can handle the additional debt. So the way to measure that is to work out, okay, how much is the company making in terms of net earnings? How much profit's coming in? And therefore, how long would it take them to pay off that debt based on the power of the company at the time? And back in 2008, the debt level at 17.4 billion was fine because they were making enough money to be able to pay that debt off in about one year. It would have taken about a year. BP are now operating at a level where they've got 56.4 billions worth of debt. And because of the earning power of the company right now, i.e. the money that they're making, which isn't very much, it's going to take them 12.3 years to pay off that debt with the profits that they're currently making. So what that's telling me uh, is that they'd have to see a significant increase in their earnings right now. Or that if they don't, they've got a massive amount of debt outstanding that's going to take them 12 years to pay off at the current level. That's not good. That's too much. That means they are kind of biting off more than they can chew. And that's something that I'm not interested in. What it's going to do is it's going to increase the interest on debt, for example, which is something we've seen happening here. It's going up and up every single year and it's going up faster than the profits are, uh, if they have, if they even make profits, <laughs> and uh, it's it's just generally a not a healthy figure right now. So that's something that puts me off as well. Uh, retained earnings were eighty six billion back in two thousand and eight. This is essentially the cash reserves, what the cash of the company sitting on for acquisitions, mergers, special dividends, whatever investments and and assets that they can buy for the business to grow the business. They're sitting on eighty six billion back in two thousand and eight. That's now at ninety nine billion in twenty eighteen. So we have seen some growth there, but it's gone up and come back down and starting to go back up again. So again, it's the story of BP. It's been volatile. Uh, but yeah, so overall, the last five years, the average uh, growth on the reserves has been minus 4.8%. So over the last five years, it's gone down. Uh, but over the last 10 years, it's gone up. So short term, it's not, not been good. Uh, and then return on shareholder equity is terrible. The, re the scores are terrible, basically. I mean, what we're essentially looking at there is what return is the company getting off all the assets that it owns and it's been, been investing in? Well, the answer is... For the last five years, it's been not very good because they've been losing money. So all the assets that they've been investing the company profits in that they were making before have not been delivering because the company have not been making profits over the last five years. So overall, this is not a good company, not a good company to invest in. They don't tick out pretty much any of the boxes that I'm looking for. Let's take a look at the chart. <laughs> Okay, so looking at the chart here, we're going from 2008 to present day, essentially. Let me just squeeze that in a bit. So back in 2008, we were sitting at a share price of between five and highs of six pounds a share. This was 10 years ago in 2008. Today, we're looking at four pound 97 a share. So, I mean, essentially, we're at, we're if not down, we're at the same price we were at 10 years ago with BP. That's not what we're looking for. We, this is not the chart of a company that I would be excited about as a growth investor. If I had invested in BP 10 years ago at five, six pound a share and today it's worth four pound 97, that's a disaster. That's 10 years of the share price being lower than it was when I got in. So, I mean, there has been little, there's been one little spike here in 2010, but after 2010, obviously the losing years came in. And it's just decimated the share price. And again, it's a roller coaster. You can see that the figures that we've looked at just now represent this chart. You know, we can see the the, the drops in share price when the results came out, and the, the losing years are very very obvious here. And it's it does it's not a pretty picture, and it's not what we're looking for. Uh, more interestingly, I think if we go back all the way to uh, 1999 so we're looking at over 20 years ago 
this company were trading at five pounds uh, let me just see five pounds eighty five pound fifty so twenty years ago the share price was higher on BP that means that if you invested in BP twenty years ago you're still waiting for your trades to be in profit <laughs> that's terrible and this is indicative of a company that does not meet the criteria that I've been looking for in the numbers when they don't meet the criteria this is the kind of chart you can expect to see these are the kind of performance you can expect to see certainly over the last 10 years that we've analyzed in terms of the figures when we find a company that are smashing all the criteria and they are meeting the grade we see a very very different chart and you'll see that when we get better companies that we look at but yeah this this doesn't look good um, so with that we've looked at the numbers we've looked at the chart let's head over now to the leaderboard and see where BP fit in. Okay, so not looking too good for BP, uh, despite being one of the most commonly traded and most popular stocks of the FTSE 100, despite being the place to go for most investors, beginner investors who are thinking, where do I put my money? Uh, how do I get started? Let's look through the company's BP. I've heard of BP. Uh, they're in oil. There's always money in oil. Let's pump our money into that. Uh, generally speaking, as we saw before, BP's share price hasn't moved in a long time. And uh, let's have a look and see then how they have appeared and how they fared on the leaderboard. Um, very surprisingly, they sit seventh at the, at the moment on the leaderboard. There's not going to be many companies worse than that. I mean, I, I, I admit there will be probably, but minus 48 is pretty bad. Not a company we're going to want to invest in. Uh, there will be companies worse than that. I've, I've already gone through some companies and seen worse scores than minus 48. But bear in mind, we're looking for the glowing plus 100 in the score for companies that we would be looking to invest in. I'm going nowhere near BP PLC. Hey there guys, just before you go, if you've been enjoying the FTSE show so far, you're enjoying the stuff that we're putting out there, it would be awesome if you could give the thumbs up on the video. That helps with the YouTube algorithm, gives the video more likes, that sort of thing. Uh, it means more people get to, to see the video in their suggested videos list and all that kind of stuff. Thank you so much for tuning in and being a supporter of the show and I'll hopefully see you in the next episode. Cheers guys.